Hey, what's up guys? So today we're gonna be going over the Bayesian probability problem. So this is a genetics and so we're gonna talk about the purpose. So the purpose is to find the carrier status of a certain patient that is unsure about their pedigree. It's an incomplete pedigree. So what we need to know, we need to know the genetic disease and it's specifically its inheritance. So example like autosomal dominance. So we need to know its inheritance so we can calculate or get a better idea of what's going on. We have four components that we're gonna to need to calculate, which is prior, conditional, joint, and posterior. And we need to be able to write out all the possible scenarios. This is just the possible scenarios that the, the that the patient might be a carrier and whatnot. So it's pretty easy. So the genetic disease that we're gonna go over and kinda use as our example problem is a hemophilia A, which is a X-linked recessive gene or genetic disorder. So it's X-linked recessive. That's how it's passed down. We're gonna take a look at our chart right now. So our chart, as you guys can see, we have our patient, which is with the one with the arrow, which is on 3E. And so she wants to know if she is the carrier for hemophilia A because she has two uncles that are carriers, which are in red, which is 2A and 2D. Her mom, we're not sure of. If we knew the mom, then we would be able to easily get a calculation of what she is. And we don't know the grandma either. But since hemophilia A is a, um, a X-linked recessive inheritance, we know that the grandma has to be a carrier because the uncles are infected none of the siblings are infected so this gives us speculation to say maybe the mom is not uh, a carrier of hemophilia a because it is likely that she would have passed it down to at least one of them because it would be a 50 percent pass down rate so we're gonna do a little chart for the grandma so just to prove you guys that i am correct with the hemophilia a so the grandpa has to be big x and y because he is not a carrier of hemophilia a the grandma would have to be big x little x because she passed it down to two of her sons unless there was some cheating going on but i don't think so so you have 50 percent chance that you're going to pass down hemophilia a to a son or make your daughter a carrier. So the grandma has to be a carrier unless there's funky business. So now we're gonna write down the possible scenarios. So the mom is a carrier, the patient is not. That's gonna be our scenario one. Two is gonna be the patient and the mom are carriers. So that's what we don't want or that's what we're not hoping for. And then number three, which is what we are best option what we are hoping for and the patient and mom are both not carriers of hemophilia a so those are the three possible scenarios there's no other scenario that could occur unless there's some hanky panky business going on like i said before but i don't think so so let's go over here and now we're going to start it off so I, what i'd like to do is i like drawing out the pedigree chart for each of them each of the scenarios and then writing down my four components prior conditional joint and posterior so this one is the mom is a carrier, but patient is not. So we're gonna go ahead and put the red dot in at the grandma because we know she is a carrier because she has two sons that are a carrier. So I'm gonna put a red dot on each of the grandmas, which is 1A. And then we're gonna zoom in, we're gonna see. So this one is if the mom is a carrier as well. So she prior, she has a one half or a half, half chance of getting hemophilia A. So she had a half chance, and this is the scenario that she does have, she did get it. So she has that red dot, so she is a carrier. And she has a half chance of passing it down to her children as well, because her husband is not a carrier. For each of her children, she has a half chance. So to get joint, we're gonna multiply our prior by all our conditionals. So all our, our prior versus all our conditionals. So what we prior knew, our history, multiplied by our conditionals. So we're gonna take one half, I'm gonna raise that by five, but to make things easier for you guys, I'm gonna scratch that out so that we could kind of better understand this. So I'm gonna go one half, raise it by four, and that's gonna be symbolic, or that's gonna be for her brothers that are all unaffected 
So that's going to be multiplied by the patient herself. So she has a half chance of getting or being a carrier of hemophilia A. And then we're going to multiply it by a half, which is our prior, it's our prior knowledge, which is our mother. And this is going to equal out to 1 over 64. And what we're going to use that for, we're going to use that in just a moment. We're not really doing anything with that quite yet, but we're going to use that to figure out our posterior calculation after we figure out all of our other scenarios. So our posterior, posterior prob possibility, the formula for that is joints divided by all the other joints combined and added together. All other joint possibilities. But we need to figure out our other joint possibilities before we can calculate this. So let's go on to our second scenario. We're gonna come back to the posterior. So our second scenario is mom is a carrier and patient is a, car is a carrier as well. So we of course don't want this for our patient, but it is a possibility. So we need to factor that in. And that's very important to keep in mind. You have to factor in all of the possible scenarios. So the mom, the grandma, and the daughter or the patient are all carriers. So what would be our prior uh, prior possibility? Still one half because the grandma is a carrier and the grandpa is not. Conditional would still be one half because the, the patient has one half chance of getting it if her mom was a carrier. So conditional is one half. Joint, it's gonna be very similar to the one above as well. So joint, we're gonna take our prior multiplied by all of our conditionals so our prior, now we're gonna multiply it by, okay, one, one half, I'm gonna raise it to five to make it a little quicker. So that's all of our siblings and our patient, multiplied by our prior, and we get one over 64, similar to the one above. Now our posterior, same way, we will not be able to calculate this until we get all of our scenarios out of the way. So we're gonna have our joint over all the other joint um, possibilities combined and added together. And our posterior is gonna give us our uh, theorized, our best look at what's the likelihood of the patient being a carrier. So then neither the mom nor the patient is a carrier. So this is our most wanted likelihood or outcome for our patient. So this is with neither the mom nor the patient is a carrier. So the mom had a half chance of getting the, the uh, being a carrier. But if she did not receive it, if she's not hemophilia A positive, she does not have a recessive X, she cannot pass it down to any of her children. So each of her children will have one, pretty much 100% that they will not get the X recessive uh, trait. I mean, they will not get hemophilia A at all because it cannot pass down. There's not a small X there to pass down. So conditional is one. Joint would be uh, one half times one to the four times, which is all her siblings. And then I'm gonna break it down again and then multiply it by one, which is the patient. And that's gonna be one half. And keep in mind that the joint is still there and posterior is not going to be a hundred percent. It'll never be a hundred percent in this case because there's still a possibility of the mother having hemophilia A or being a carrier, and she just got lucky having all her children not be carriers. So we're going to get our first posterior calculation. So we're going to get one half, which is the joint, divided by one over sixty-four plus one over sixty-four because those are both our other joint calculations from our above two scenarios and then plus one half and what does that equal out to it's going to equal out to i think 16 over 17 um so each of those are from each of our scenarios and what this is going to calculate for us is the mother's um likelihood of being a carrier so not our patients so 16 over 17 which is about 94 percent and this is the likelihood that our our mother is not a carrier of hemophilia. So she is, it's very likely that she does not have the hemophilia uh, chromosome or gene or gen genetic disorder. 
So this is very important. So that, that means it's highly likely that she does not have it because none of her siblings are, are carriers or none of her, her sons and daughters are carriers. If per se she had more sons and daughters, that would only increase the odds to 100% because it's likely that she would have passed it on if she had it. So this is, this is like deductive reasoning of saying that the mother does not have hemophilia A. So 6% is, sorry my pen was dying, 6% uh, is that she is a carrier or is still a carrier. Let's see. Oh, there it is. All right. So 6% is that she is still a carrier. But like I said, if she has more kids, it's only going to further prove or deduce that she is not a car carrier unless one of her kids shows hemophilia. So for our second scenario, we're going to have 1 over 64 over 1 over 64 over 1 over 64 plus 1 over 64 plus 1 half. And this, this scenario, I believe, was the one that had both the mother and the daughter having hemophilia A. So in this scenario, you're going to get 1 over 34. So if the mother did have hemophilia A and all the children don't have it except for the daughter, then she has a 1 over 34 chance, which is 3%. And that's the same with the one above, except the one above is that she is not a carrier. Therefore, it's, she has a 3% chance of not being a carrier. Cool. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, leave them below.